Until now, we've been working uh, with this kind of standard picture of this little guy and his browser. Now, this used to be you, but uh, now this is the user. You have upgraded to the other side of the picture where the servers are. So let's get these boxes. We've seen these 100 times. OK, and let's, uh, let's add you over here. You are now the programmer. Congratulations. You are a web developer. And we can talk about users and how much trouble they cause us. Now, a normal web request, a user makes a request to the servers, and we respond with, uh, with, with the response. So no surprises there. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is when your servers start making requests to other servers. So you know, this is our website. You know, it runs on these boxes. And let's say we're going to hit um, you know, somebody else, Twitter, for example. And they have their own servers. And these servers are probably on fire because it's Twitter. And so we can, have a, we can have a web page that actually makes requests to Twitter. And these are our computers talking to their computers. And this happens all the time. They're still communicating over HTTP. And Twitter still responds as usual. But if we're writing some, some you know, web program that, for example, you know, does some data analysis on Twitter, the user might make a request to us. We might make a request to Twitter servers. They respond with, um, you know, with their responses as they would normally. And then we may manipulate that data and return it to the user. And this is actually a really common case. And what I'd like to do now is actually explain um, how Hipmunk works a little bit, because we do a lot of this type of communication. OK, so let's change our picture a little bit to be a little bit more uh, about Hipmunk, because I'd like to explain how our architecture works. So in this case, this is still, uh, we call users customers when they're actually paying. And this is me, Steve. And this is Hipmunk servers. Now, when a user does a flight search, what we do is we hit a bunch of our data providers to actually where we actually get our flight data from. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take your flight search and we'll, we'll send it to ITA. We'll send it to an airline. And in some cases, we'll even send it to Amtrak if, if that's appropriate. Each of these guys are their own. Um, you know, these, these, these are companies who have their own services that, that we work with. And so ITA will run our flight search, and they'll send us data back. The, uh, the airline or two, will, they'll run their own flight search on their own system, and they'll send it back to us. And Amtrak will do its thing and send their data back to us. So then on our server, we have all of this, uh, all of this flight search data represented by this blob here. We will manipulate all this data, collate it, make you nice results, and then we'll send back our HTML response. So what we're going to be working on in this unit is how do we make our server speak to other servers when there's no browser involved? We're still using HTTP, but we are now communicating over other protocols. And we saw some of this in unit one, but we're going to be doing a lot of it in this lesson because there's a lot of cool things you can do when you uh, realize that you're not the only uh, service on the internet.